Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are really glad to have this opportunity to be with you in worshiping the Lord. I mean, the Lord bless you as we fellowship online through singing praises and listening to His Word. I know many of us have been really challenged for the past few days or months. Myself and my wife have also been pushed to areas we were uncomfortable. Sometimes I say this is far from over. But you know what? God is also far from over with our lives. And that always reassures us with our future. Life is not a straight line. But also remember that God is always there to protect us and guide us even in the most difficult roads. Those prayers we have day in and day out are very powerful because we know that God is always in control. One more thing I would like to encourage everyone is to reach out to people and check on them because who knows, maybe someone needs someone to talk to or can even listen to their struggles. And brothers and sisters, you may also share this video or our watch parties in Facebook, including our reflection series every Thursday, 6.30 p.m. and our online worship service every Sunday, 10 a.m. You can also tag your friends in social media so they may also be blessed by God's word. Even on other days, you can also share our replays in different platforms. This might be a really big help to others. And by doing this, you are already partnering with us in sharing the gospel to the ends of the earth through online platform. Speaking of partnership, we would like to continue to encourage you to partner with us in sharing the gospel, not just here in our place, but also to many places. Just like our church vision, a breadcrumb church in every city and beyond. Partner with us and see more people being reached and being transformed. Here are our back details. As we start our praise and worship, allow me to read Luke chapter 2 verse 10 to 14. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom His favor rests. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for this wonderful life. We thank You for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us. Truly, the challenges we have leads us to more understanding and deeper relationship with You. Thank You for the protection from harm and sickness, and for giving us strength and wisdom in our daily lives. Lord, give us peace and joy in our hearts despite the continuous anxiety that is brought by the pandemic and other obstacles that we are facing. We thank you, Jesus, for guiding us in every aspect of our lives. May you grant us the gift of your Spirit that we may know you more. Today, we pray you open our hearts and minds in listening to your words and in worshiping you. May we bless you and glorify you in our worship today. Amen.
You are worthy of all our praises, Lord Jesus. And we honor your holy name, O oh God. Sing with me, church. And lift your voice. And sing hallelujah to our God. Sunday to everyone. How are you? I hope everyone is doing well. And it is only 12 days before Christmas. And let may that be a reminder of God's goodness and faithfulness to us. If you have your Bibles with you, will you open with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Let us pray. Father God, it is such a great privilege that we are able to meditate upon your word. And we just pray that your spirit will Allow us to illuminate our minds and our hearts to understand what you are impressing to us. We pray that you teach us. We pray that your word will rebuke us, but at the same time encourage us so that we may grow more into the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. We trust you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. We are now in our second part of our Reconciliation series. Last Sunday, Pastor Lawrence shared to us the characteristics of someone who is reconciled to Christ. He said that believers who are reconciled to God are, number one, changed through Christ, united in Christ, and ministering together for Christ. Today, we will be talking about how are we to be agents of reconciliation. There was a person who once asked me, What do I do now, now that I am a Christian? How do I share the good news to the people? And today, we will be talking about what 
the message of reconciliation is. As we look at our passage, this was Apostle Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And we could say that this contained an encouragement in response to his previous visit that was, uh, that we can say, painful, as he said in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 1. At this point, Paul is reminding them about the ministry of reconciliation that we have in Christ. And what is this very message that we proclaim? I hope this would also be a reminder for us and also an encouragement. But this message that we proclaim is that in Christ, we have a new beginning. Verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We are new. That is the headline of our lives. Most of us are always looking for that new beginning and people are always saying, I need a fresh start. And Paul is saying here, in Christ, you are a new creation. Paul is saying to the Corinthian church that being reconciled to Christ does not only make you someone who is nicer or better, but you are a new person. It means that everything that you are now, your life now, is wholly committed to Christ. Your old ways is now gone and your life now is grounded wholly on what Christ has done. We have to remember who we are before we were reconciled to Christ. In Ephesians 2, it says, but you were dead in your trespasses. Before we met Christ, we were dead in our sins. And that's why we need a new beginning. We needed Christ because apart from Christ, we are dead in our sins. This is also God's promise to his people in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 he said and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh Paul is reminding the people that you don't need to look further to have a new beginning because the people there were being influenced by with different false teachers people who ridiculed the teachings of the apostles and who didn't believe Paul himself. And Paul is saying here, you don't need those beliefs to start afresh. Our beginning is in Christ on what He has done for us. That should be the very foundation of what we can say where our life began. That's why we can proclaim that I am new. Not only better, but new. Because in Christ, once we believe in Him, once we have faith in what Christ has done on the cross, that is the start of the newness of our lives. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4, He said, that in Christ we have the newness of life. It's because of what He has done that we are able to live our lives now and serve God and seek God because without what Christ has done, we would be left to our sins. We would be left to the wrath of God. And it's, it's only because of the grace of God through Christ that we are saved, that we can start fresh. Many of us are saying, I want to start fresh. I just want to have a new beginning. But look no further. Once you are in Christ, once you have faith in Christ, you don't need 
a new year to start just to say that we can start a new beginning you can start now because in Christ we can in Christ we can start fresh it's only because of his grace that we are new we don't only proclaim that we have a new beginning in Christ but we also have a future that is secured in Christ in verse 18 to 19 he says all this is from God through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation we have to remember a few things here first is that our lives here are temporary the truth that God is reconciling us to himself is not only a past experience but comes with it a future glory that we have in Christ he says in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself and this is what also is described as our lives that one day we will be with Christ we will be forever united with God in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 4 it says for while we are still in this tent we groan being burdened not that we would be unclothed but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life he who has prepared for us this very thing is God who has given us the spirit as a guarantee this is how our lives are described this is not our home scholars called it that we are the same as what the psalm, psalmist says that we are sojourners in this land that we are only passing through because our home is not here Paul also taught this to the Philippians when he said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 but our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a Savior the Lord Jesus Christ how comforting it is to be reminded of God's grace that he not only secured our past he also secured our future and not only that this future is something that surpasses our understanding it's not only what is here but what is eternal God is securing for us something more than we could ever imagine and that is our future glory with him that in Christ we will be reconciled with God but while we're still in this world as the passage says we will experience groaning we will experience hardships we will experience pain but not only that we don't only experience pain we also experience God's blessing God's guidance God's goodness God's faithfulness his love his grace his mercy every day because he not only promised a future for us but he will be with us in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 Paul says and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ this means that every thing that happens in our lives is part of God's character building for us but every part of our journey will be more like Christ every part of our journey we will grow more in our relationship with God and that is the reminder how great is God's grace we are unworthy 
of His grace, of His love, yet God Himself made a way for us to be reconciled with Him. God Himself initiated. God Himself is the foundation of this reconciliation. And that is what we proclaim. We proclaim that our future is eternally secured with Christ. And that future is not built upon what this world offers, but on the finished work of Christ. Our assurance shouldn't come from what we have here, the favors or the blessings that we have now, but our assurance should come because Christ loved us. Christ gave himself for us. Christ rose from the dead for us so that one day we will be with him. We are not only forgiven, but we are also blessed. Proclaim that in Christ we have a new beginning. We also proclaim that in Christ we have a future that is secured. And we also proclaim that in Christ we have a special mission. In verse 20 to 21 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What we proclaim does not only stay with us. It is not only a story that is hidden in our hearts, but it is a story that we live out. That's why Paul is saying that, that once we are reconciled with God, we are now ambassadors for Christ. In some ways, we could say that we represent Christ to this world. And we are the instruments that God will use so that more people would come to know God and more people would be reconciled to God and more people will experience the same new beginning, the same secured future that we have in Christ. That is what Paul is saying here. That our lives, that everything that we do, how we live our life, is proclaiming and representing Christ to the world. So that should make us reflect what kind of life are we reflecting to the world? What are we ambassadors for with our current life? In 2 Corinthians 4, chap chapter 4, verse 6, it says, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts, to give light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This light that we have is the same light that will give life to the world. Also our calling in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Our lives shine that light that we have in Christ. The very source of everything that we have is Jesus Christ. And that is how we proclaim. And that is our mission. Is to live out the message of reconciliation. We should live out how God is gracious how God is loving to the world. We are the instruments that God will use so that more people would come to know Christ. So let us reflect upon our lives. Are we living a life that is proclaiming the message of reconciliation? Maybe some of us are having a hard time living this out it doesn't only mean that we are reconciled to God when we proclaim with our lives 
the message of reconciliation it means our relationship with other people also our relationship with our friends our families they proclaim the, the message of reconciliation are we promoting the same message or are we storing bitterness towards one another are we building up walls against each other when the very message that we proclaim is reconciliation that praise be to God because in Christ we have that light because in Christ we can proclaim to the world this message we must be ready to be used by God always to proclaim the message of reconciliation to the people because this message isn't something that we keep hidden hidden but it is something that is shared to everyone that in Christ we have a new beginning in Christ we have a future that is secured and in Christ we have a special mission our lives here are not left purposeless we but in Christ we have a purpose in here in this world and that's how we glorify God that's how we worship God if we proclaim the message of his good news to the people let us pray Father God you remind us that it's only because of your grace of your mercy that we are here that we are able to stand before you that we are able to approach your throne of grace with confidence it's only because of Christ and what he has done we pray oh God if there's anyone here who's really searching for that new beginning who's really searching for security in the future who's searching for a purpose in life we find it in you Jesus Christ who has shown us these things who has secured our past who has secured our future and who is guiding us in our present life teach us to honor you O oh God in everything that we do so that we can be instruments so we can be used that more people would come to know you more people would come to know these truths pray all these things in Jesus name Amen. praise God for the wonderful worship service we thank you for the time you spent with us we pray that you will be able to join us again next week if you have been blessed with God's Word today and maybe you have questions we would like to hear from you you can message us in our Facebook page Breadcom Mandaluyo let's close our worship service in prayer Father God, we thank you for your word. We wouldn't understand all of this without your grace. May this continuously remind us daily deep in our hearts so we may live according to your words. We thank you for the lives of the people who are watching this service and may you bless them and give them the desire to know you more. We pray that you protect us and guide us all throughout this week. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.